just wanna thank the Lord. Sunday dinner was more than just a meal. Sunday dinner was a fellowship and a spiritual communion with God. Hello and welcome to another episode of Cooking with Jimmy. This episode I'll be cooking oxtails and rice, smoked neck bones, and collard greens. So here I have my oxtails and I'm going to flash oil them. Just to get rid of all the residual bones, fragments, anything that may be on them, that happens from time to time during the process of cutting the vertebrae. So you may find that there's fragments from the machine that cuts them. You want to get rid of them by flash boiling them in water. So that's what I'm doing right now. It doesn't take very long. You'll see any residuals come to the surface. And once you stop seeing those residuals, like fragments or any type of gunk, I would call it. Once you stop seeing that come to the surface off of the oxtail, then you'll know that it's, 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 it's ready to be pulled out. So I'm just going to gently put them in there. They always give you a couple small ones. I don't know why they do that. But um, I'm going to take them anyway. So we're going to give this a moment to do its thing. Maybe I would say five minutes tops. And I'll see you back. So here we are back a little bit more than five minutes later. I realized that even though I let them thaw overnight, they were still a bit frozen. So they made the temperature drop of the water and they were stuck together. So I wanted to make sure that they thawed enough so that I could get between each of them, get them unstuck. So now they're ready to be seasoned and uh, that's what we're going to do right now. And if you look at the water, you can see that it's a, a filmy kind of color. It's not clear or anything like that. I'll turn the heat off so maybe the steam doesn't interfere with you being able to see, but you can see that all those residuals, that's not stuff we want. So this is a way of refining them. You don't want any grit or anything on these. And um, when they cut these up, because they are the spine. So when they cut these up with the electric saw, there's that potential for there to be grit from that bone, from them slicing through it with that machine. So you don't want any of that in there. Okay, so on to our next. Okay, those of you who have watched my previous videos know how we do. So I'm here at my smoker and I have my charcoal and hickory pellets. And I don't know about any of you, but I like the the taste of charcoal in my uh in my smoke i call me weird for those of you who know more about smoking you know i like charcoal leave some comments and let me know how you feel about charcoal i love it and um of course i like hickory and um if you watch any of my previous videos you know that i'm going to let this lighter fluid rest in here for about 20 minutes before i light it because I don't want that taste of the lighter fluid in my smoked meat. So I think that should do it. I'm gonna let this rest for about 20 minutes and I'll see you back. So I have some stewed beef and I rinsed it and I'm going to just add it into with my oxtails. And this is just to stretch the oxtails. Y'all, oxtails are expensive. 
and uh, you get a lot of bone and not a lot of meat, but it is a very robust flavor uh, that is uh, has a lot of marbling and is uh, likened to a ribeye steak. So it, it is very much so worth the $26 that I spent for the little bit that you see. However, uh, for an additional $10, I was able to buy the uh, beef stew, uh, and um, that will um, add to it and um, allow me to share this with more people because I love to share. Um, there's nothing better than eating a great meal and saying, hey, you got to taste this. This is really good. And, you know, this is what I love about doing this channel is I get to share uh, my cooking experiences with you and you get a chance to see what it is that I do from day to day. So we're ready to put this uh, on the grill and smoke it. So what I have here is filtered water. I use my Brita to uh, create a uh, stock. I added uh, beef stock. I added, uh, well, not beef stock, but uh, beef bouillon and thyme, sage, onions, fresh garlic, thyme, sugar, about a teaspoon, of, a tablespoon, a heaping tablespoon of sugar. I added soy sauce, Worcestershire sauce, turmeric, crushed red peppers. And I'm going to smoke this because what I don't want to do is after smoking the oxtails is to add them to water that will dilute the smoke flavor that I've worked so hard to incorporate into them. So I, I'm smoking both the oxtails and the stock. So it's been about 20 minutes and I've lit my coals and wood chips. I'm just going to let it set a fire for a moment, burn out some of that lighter fluid that's in there it's going to come to a, a pretty good high flame but we're going to let that happen for a few minutes before we actually add our meat into our smoker and our stock into the smoker been about an hour and a half and my meat and my broth is ready to come off the grill and into the crock pot. Before I put my oxtails into the crock pot, I want to get a little crust on them. So I have my ghee. Just going to add a little bit of that to a hot skillet. I'm going to take my oxtails, I'm going to coat them in flour. And place them in the skillet. Now this is a non-stick skillet, so I'm not really concerned about it sticking. Just want to get a really nice good crust on this before I put it in to the crock pot. I'm going to put it in the crock pot and let it slow cook for about four hours actually. Until it's nice and tender. Just almost falling off the bone. in here. As my meat is browning in my oil, it's creating a roux. The flour and the oil is creating a roux. 
I went ahead and added a little bit of vegetable oil. Now I'm not trying to cook this all the way through. I just want to get a nice crust on the outside. And so because my stewed beef is uh, smaller, I'm going to take it out before I take out my larger pieces. It's been an hour and my oxtails have been on a low simmer. The consistency seems pretty good. Of course, they have a long way to go. I have my rice, my rinsed long grain rice. I'm going to rinse it about six times and let it soak for 20 minutes. And then I'm going to cook it. I'm going to saute it in uh, oil. And, I'm, and when it turns a translucent color, I'm going to uh, add water and boil it for about 20 minutes to transfer my oxtails to a roasting pan. So I'm just going to set my oxtails aside. I'm going to use my, take my sieve and just ladle my broth into it. There's another oxtail. And it's also allowing me to separate my onions and my, my pieces of garlic that are in there. And I'm just going to take that and put it in the food processor and emulsify it. Anyone who has watched my previous videos knows that I don't like stems in my collard greens. So I bought pre-cut, pre-cleaned collard greens and I'm going to remove the stems from them. I'm going to wash them a second time, but I most certainly am going to remove the stems. So I have my collard greens clean and de-stemmed and in a pot of shallow water. I'm going to add a little bit of crushed red pepper. A little bit goes a long way. Black pepper. And apple cider vinegar to start. I'm also going to add a bit of adobo, which is basically garlic and cumin, a few different things. It has salt in it. And I'm going to bring this to a low simmer. I have pork neck bones that I picked up from the supermarket and they're gonna go in the collard greens. I wanted to get smoked pork neck bones, but they didn't have any because of the whole scare with the um, virus, the uh, coronavirus. So they were all out. So I'm going to smoke these myself. I've cleaned them and I have my grill uh, preparing right now. I have my charcoal and my hickory chips actually uh, marinating in the lighter fluid. As I mentioned earlier, uh, I usually wait 20 minutes and let them soak for a few minutes to avoid having that lighter fluid taste in my meat. So I'm going to smoke these for about 45 minutes, and then I'm going to add them to my collard greens. I'm just going to add a little seasoning salt to them. I'm not gonna heavily season them. And 
and that should that should pretty much do it. A little bit of black pepper. I wanted you all to see how the sieve works. You see how it separated the oil and the broth. The oil is on top, the broth is at the bottom, and basically the spout, the way it's designed, is you just pour until you get to the broth, and then you stop once you get to the oil. So what I'm going to do is pour the broth out, and once I get to the oil, I'm going to take that, and I'm going to make a roux out of it. Say what you want about me, but I like my MSG. So I have my collard greens going and I have my stems going over here. And so my stems are almost ready to be drained and the broth will be put into the collard greens. So over here, I had a little broth left from my oxtails after making my roux. So I just went ahead and just poured that into my collard greens. And you know, I decided at the last minute, I wasn't gonna get, uh, put this in a, a food processor. It would really be a nice added, uh, texture for the uh, collard green. So I'm just gonna blend this together as it is. I added uh, barbecue sauce to my collard greens. When I have a chance to, I try to make it from scratch, uh, but in any event, the jar works in this case because it's just to give it the barbecue flavor. It's not the dominating of the dish. Okay, so I'm gonna add some brown sugar to my collard greens. I'm about to add Worcestershire sauce and soy sauce to my collard greens. So I'm going to add a few of these pork neck bones that I smoked into my pot of collard greens. I don't want to drag too much rice over there, but it's inevitable. water to this and keep it at a low temperature just enough so that it covers it completely for the 20 minutes that I want to cook it without burning out so I don't want to add too much I just want it to just nicely loosely sit in this and I'm gonna cover it and let it simmer on low for 20 minutes. Okay, so I have my saucepan with my oil that I've sieved and separated and I'm ready to add all-purpose flour. Actually, this is self-rising flour. And uh, I'm going to make a roux with the oil that I separated. So my roux has thickened and it's just about ready for me to add my broth. I 
I'm going to add it sparingly because I'm not sure how much I'll actually need. But usually once you add the broth to the flour, the flour really, really thickens up, it fluffs up on you. And then you just add a little bit more. to add my oxtails back to my crock pot and then add the rest of the broth. Okay, I'm ready to add my roux back into my crock pot. red wine called Carnivores Zinfandel. I'll make sure I add that into the video so you can see what the bottle looks like. It's not an expensive red wine. It's a um, very dry, deep red wine that is inexpensive. It was maybe $11 for the bottle that I'll show you. And it just really adds to your collard grains and to your uh, oxtails, and I really like it. I have a few more. I'm just going to throw them down here. Okay, friends, I've been really practicing working with the cameras, and so I'm sure I'm going to see a lot of growth coming up in the future, and I'm going to cringe at some of my first videos, but growth is better than none at all. So let us pray. Lord, we thank you for food in a world where people hunger. We thank you for friends in a world where people walk alone. Lord, we ask that you give your grace and your mercy to the people around the world who are suffering behind the, the, the coronavirus. We, we want you to help us figure out how to put an end to this virus spreading and help all the people so that we don't lose any more lives. We ask this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I am. <laughs> Starving is not a word. Starving is not a word. Mm. Nice and pickled. Mm -mm. This is a, one of those, <laughs> oh boy, I'm getting ahead of myself. This is one of the smoked neck bones.
Mm. I'm just so hungry. Mm -mm -mm. I'm filming this Sunday dinner at 10 o'clock on Saturday night, I have to admit. Because I'll be lucky if when I get through with all this editing, I'll have it done by in the morning so that I can actually post it on Sunday. My goal is for Sunday dinner videos to be on Sunday. So my friend, Mary, who you met in the other video, came over to eat with me, but had to go. Unfortunately, I just could not pull it together in time. She said she had to go home. So, I will be saving her a plate, I told her, that she can come by and pick up anytime tomorrow. Because she's the one that wanted me to make the collard greens. So, cheers to Mary. There's so much going on in the world right now. Speaking of the coronavirus, at least where I live, people are really panicking in New York about, you know, running out of stuff. And for some reason, people around here have been buying a lot of bottled water and toilet paper. I don't understand. What that has to do with the coronavirus, I don't. <clears throat> I really don't. Let's say, you know what? I got to taste one of these eyes, Joe. They say you have to stay quarantined for seven days. That's what I heard. I don't know. So that's what I claim. And of course, anybody who knows about oxtails, you eat them with your hands. So it's not a date night meal. Mm -mm. It's a, we've been married for three years now. And I should be that comfortable around you, kind of meal. That's the kind of meal this is. So I wouldn't cook this for Valentine's Day for somebody I'm dating. Well, some people date a long time, live together, and date these days without being married. Mm. I just ate some of the beef stew. Mm. I don't know why I cook so much meat, but I knew I didn't want a lot of carbs, which is why I decided not to make any cornbread. But getting back to Corona, virus. <clears throat> I did have to go out to get a few things. And by the way, I'm going to leave a clip. A friend of mine, Mary, actually called me.
from the supermarket yesterday. And she showed me a picture of a local supermarket called Wegmans here in Western New York. And I'm gonna post it so you guys can see how people were buying out these supermarkets. I went <clears throat> at the last minute to make the collard greens. And so I got some from the um, store and, you know, I knew I needed some smoked meat with it and I didn't feel like firing back up the grill. But when I went to the store to buy the smoked meat, they didn't have any. Didn't have any smoked meat. No smoked beef, no smoked pork, no smoked ham hocks, no smoked turkey. No smoked neck bone, so they had fresh neck bones, so I bought them and smoked them myself. I was tempted to use bacon, but I said, no, I'm not going to do that to YouTube. I'm going to bring my A game. I mean, I, if they would have had uh, fat back or something like that, like salted pork, I would use that. But it would have to be a desperate measure for me to use bacon. It would come out good, though. I believe I have used bacon. But one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about is <clears throat> the way that I cook and the recipes I use. I don't want to give any other YouTubers who watch my channel, which seems to be quite a, more, or quite a few YouTubers watch YouTubers is what I'm saying. But I don't ever want to give anybody the impression that I'm saying that my way is the best way or the only way to do something. I think I offended a fellow YouTuber uh, when I said that you should use self-rising flour for your fried chicken and that you got to use self-rising flour. This is just some club soda. But no, I wasn't insinuating that anybody is wrong for not using it. But I do feel like a lot of people use it on these shows and they're not telling people they're using it. And so people can't figure out why theirs is not coming out exactly like theirs on this, is on the show. <clears throat> and as far as the clarified butter that I use in my... Uh, Chicken wing one, uh, buffalo wing, authentic buffalo wing video. I didn't want to give anybody the impression that if you don't use clarified butter in your chicken wing sauce or Frank's hot, Frank's red hot. I mean, I don't, I don't want anybody to think that because I can tell from one of the videos that I watched one of the people that I'm subscribed to got offended. I can tell, but I have a tendency to ramble sometimes. And I don't mean nothing by it. 
Mm-mm-mm. I've got a big appetite too. Alright. Mm. As soon as, as soon as I said that, I felt like slowing down. Mm. Oh. Mm. Now this is Sunday dinner. But I don't want anybody to You know, panic and and maybe it's a sign that we could all do more to be prepared for anything in general as a society. Because I believe they're saying that it's almost like a freight train and they're trying to slow it down. But at this point, it's going to get worse before it gets better because their data is showing them that the virus is spreading faster than they're able to contain people and treat them. So I understand people's concerns I heard the actor Tom Hanks and his wife got it and they're saying that it's more dangerous for people I think in their early 60s and older they're saying that it's you know, more fatal for them potentially. That um, the the younger you are, the basically anybody younger than that um, would get sick, but wouldn't necessarily. It wouldn't cause them death, but um, this is something because in China, from what I understand, people live a long time. So they have a large population that are senior citizens. So this is not good for them. Well, it's a lot to take in, but I really enjoy cooking this dinner and um, did you subscribe to my channel? Are you going to share this video and like this video? I sure hope you do. And for my Facebook family, please share my video on Facebook. And my goal is to get to a thousand by June. And uh, not going a good rate right now. Uh oh. I'm not going. <clears throat> at the rate I want right now. So I'm working to change that. And you can help. Well, you know, I can't say when the last time was when I ate like this. 
I mean, my stomach was, wasn't small today. Mm. But I hope you enjoy um, the video and God bless. I'm out.